Tommy is only one of hundreds who have seen something cavorting in the waters of Lake Champlain. Whatever it is, witnesses claim it travels in high gear, moving across the waters in serpentine fashion. Many of the witnesses through the decades have been thoroughly reputable people. They include a county sheriff, a school principal, and a newspaper publisher, as well as large groups of people on riverboat steamers, on shoreside picnics, and even at a bridge opening ceremony in 1945. Skeptics, and there are many among the 200,000 residents of the area, claim that monsters are only in the eye of the beholder, that old stories of sea serpents and snaky creatures from the deep have led excited witnesses to see monsters where none exist. It's just a large fish, they say, or a log bobbing on the surface of the water. Whatever it is, it may have been there as long as the lake itself. The Indians have been the first to see it, since they were the first in the area. But the oldest recording sighting of the Lake Champlain monster took place, fittingly, in 1609, when the French explorer Samuel de Champlain, for whom the lake was named, discovered the inland strip of water and wrote down his impressions of a serpent-like creature whose body was as thick as a wine cask. Then came the inland sea battles of the French-Indian War and the War of 1812. The Lake Champlain creature was smart enough to stay low while the grape shot was flying. Some of those old gunners were notoriously inaccurate. The creature was next spotted in 1819, then disappeared until more and more people began to settle the area. During the 30-year period between 1870 and 1900, there were enough sightings to set off a phone-scale monster scare. It was during this period that the sheriff, N. H. Mooney, and the newspaper publisher, Wendell Lansing, of the Essex County Republican, joined the list of witnesses.